Hey everybody, it's me, Lee, Snowstorm. As you can tell, I'm doing the Da Vinci Code. This is actually a game for the original Xbox. And I'm going to do my best to beat it in one day. So yeah, this should be very fun. Once again, I apologize for the very shitty quality. This is once again filmed with my digital camera. And so, let's get started. New game. A few of you might actually recognize this game from either seeing the movie or playing, not seeing the movie, yeah, seeing the movie and reading the book. Me, I've done all three, even though I just started reading this book, um, middle of November? No, October. I started reading this book in October. And I really liked it. I might actually, uh, I might actually break in with a few snippets from the book I have right beside me. About, I don't really don't know why. This game is actually rather close to what the book and movie are. And I never actually realized that until I actually read the book. So yeah, let's get started. I will be making sure, this will be a 100% walkthrough. I will be getting every single thing. And I will be showing you the extras at the very end. And I will be very quiet for the cutscenes. I'm actually going to intervene here. For those of you who don't know, it's called, that thing is called, um, um, I don't know what it's called. I shall look at the book. That is Silas. Paris by night, but not the way I'd imagined. My lecture at the American University was followed by an unexpected invitation to a crime scene. Mr. Langdon, thank you for coming. I am Captain Desu Prash. You know this man? Shucks in here. Curator of the loop. I was supposed to meet him tonight after my speech. Follow me. Random flashbacks. Run, old man, run! Save yourself! And those of you who have read the book and seen the movie, he is not dead yet. Well, he's dead now, but, you know, he tripped himself naked. That's an interesting concept to do. That's what Eddie Man does. Okay, anyway, I found out what that thing was that he was using. It's called, uh, Spike Silas, Silas Belk. So this should be of no surprise. That's quite again. Feel free to examine the body, Mr. Langdon. Yeah, it was called Silas Belt and apparently it's supposed to something Office Day does. Not Office Day. I'm not sure. I think it's for people who really commit themselves. Oh, I think it's another version of a chastity belt, but I am not sure. So don't quote me on anything. If any of you know that, please tell me. Already. And, uh, my battery just died in my controller. So, 
So if you give me 10 seconds, I'll be right back and we'll get another one. Alrighty. Everything's all good now. I fixed it. Alrighty. I hate the controls for this. It's so difficult. It's a pentacle. One of the oldest symbols on earth. Used over 4,000 years before Christ. Did you worship? No. The pentacle is a pre-Christian symbol that relates to nature worship. The ancients envisioned their world in two halves. Masculine and feminine. This pinnacle is representative of the female half of all things, a concept religious historians call the sacred feminine or divine goddess. Sonier of all people would know this. Sonier, the goddess in the stomach? Interesting. I apologize if you can't hear it. I'm doing my best to turn it up. There are, I think there's like five sections that you have to examine. Um. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm trying there, this one is an area you're supposed to examine. Why is not letting me? He stripped himself naked, folded his clothes, and put them away from himself? How do? It's rather meticulous for a dying man. I think he was trying to show us that everything he did had a purpose. Even his nudity may have meaning. <clears throat> The position of his feet reinforces the reference to the pentacle and the sacred feminine. I beg your pardon? Replication. Repeating a symbol is the simplest way to strengthen its meaning. Jacques Sonier positioned himself in the shape of a five-pointed star. <laughs> Interesting analysis. Uh, what do you think about the use of his own blood as ink? Oh, there's only three Obviously, parts. I was wrong. Nothing else to write with. Actually, I believe he used blood such that the police would follow certain forensic procedures. I'm sorry? Look at his left hand. He's clutching a large felt tip marker. It smells like alcohol. Sonnier was holding it when we found him. As I told you, we have touched nothing. Would she lie for well, because familiar he with is a liar? Of light, as you I don't know. like Please use flash flashlight bash. illumination to search crime scenes for blood and other forensic evidence. So you can As I said, I'll be collecting crops. everything here. Including everything else. How does this mean? That, monsieur, is precisely the question you are here to answer. Part of it looks like a numeric cipher. Yes, our cryptographers are already working on it. We believe these numbers may be the key to who killed him. Uh, but the text appears to be an accusation of some sort. Wouldn't you agree? An accusation against his murder makes sense, I suppose. Sonnier was a Frenchman. He lived in Paris. And yet he chose to write this message in English. Precise and wrong, Monsieur Langdon. I have seen a lot of death in my work. And let me tell you something. When a man is murdered by another man, I do not believe his final thoughts are to write an obscure spiritual statement that no one will understand. I believe he is thinking of one thing only. Not entrance. I believe Sonnier wrote this note to tell us. 
but that makes no sense whatsoever. He told me Sonia was attacked by someone he had apparently invited in. Considering the circumstances, I would assume that if Sonia wanted to tell you who killed him, he would have written down somebody's name. Precise more, precise more. Capitan. Oh, one moment, please. Me. God, I, this is such a long cutscene. Unacceptable, I made it very clear. Captain, please excuse the Miss Sophie Naboo? Ah, the moment. I have deciphered the numeric code. But before I explain, I have an urgent message for Mr. Langham. For Mr. Langham? The U.S. Embassy asks that you phone in as soon as possible. While I explain the call to Captain Fash, you need to make this call. Thank you. Where can I find a phone? This line is secure. You may use it. It should be out of the streets. Bonjour. I'm sorry, Miss Nibu. I think you may have given me the wrong... No, that is the right number. It's the three-digit code on the paper I gave you. But... The embassy has an automated message system. You have to dial an access code to pick up your messages. Alright. I'll explain this after I come back.